Hey guys and gals, Never here from Drake Wing Gaming. So we mounts with the Gaming Dragon. It's been a while, but I'm back with a new Let's Play episode of Moonlight Castle. So yeah, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and make these episodes uh, a bit longer. And I'm going to try and do some of these let Let's Play VNs a bit more. So we can try and get more, a little bit more variety on the channel. So yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up and let's go. This is the latest updated version. Okay. I was laying on my bed doing nothing. My eyes were glued to the ceiling, hyper fixated on a random spot on the wall. My feelings were still messy and unresolved. I was supposed to study now, to absorb more knowledge and spit out when it's convenient. I did not have enough strength to get out of bed and commit, but I had to. Nobody would do it for me. I thought about today, about Ryan, Dylan, Liam, and that stupid castle. I still couldn't believe the lengths that Crocodile went to to just get me to quit. He yelled, threatened, and even hurt me multiple times just to avoid directly asking me not to come. Dylan was doing his worst to make sure I'd leave him and make, make the same disgusted look everyone else gave him. Probably wouldn't have given up with a normal approach, but that didn't justify it. But what was I going to do now? I felt like I was in too deep to change my mind. This castle was serious business. I believed everyone there got that feeling, regardless of Liam's lying tendencies. I was hoping that me agreeing to this rescue mission wouldn't pressure people into following us. I sighed, knowing that was exactly what happened with Ryan and Blake. They were strong, though. I wanted to believe they could handle it just fine. I needed more intel. If I wanted to be, if I wanted to be useful... If I wanted to make sure everyone stays safe, I needed to get as much information as I could from Dylan. He was planning to visit. We would talk about it, and other things, too. I grabbed some paper and created a small list for myself of things I wanted to ask him about. Otherwise, I figured our discussion would derail and I'd lose the opportunity to get everything there was to know about this castle. This was enough, I thought. Dylan didn't have the most patience, so I had a feeling not every question would receive an answer today. Then I heard a knocking on my door. I didn't bother asking who it was and reached for the handle. It's me. He said that right as I was about to open the door. You should say your name, not me. Same thing. I chuckled and allowed him inside. I tend to confuse voices sometimes, so hearing your name would be nice. You don't have to, but... He didn't reply. I just rolled his eyes, and that was my cue to cut his, this conversation short. Make yourself at home, I guess. I didn't have much, of the, much and this barebones room had nothing to show. Dylan made a beeline for my bed and dove in, grunting a few words of relief as he moved around to get comfy in it. He was supposed to get in he was supposed to get into that chair. This bed sucks. Then get up. It will hurt your back if you keep using it. Was that some subtle concern toward me? I couldn't figure it out with the way he was glaring at me. I can't afford anything else. Ugh, of course everything's about money. The tone of his voice suggested disappointment or dissatisfaction, but I believe that was all he wanted. Isn't money the reason why you followed Liam everywhere? Dylan scoffed, but he didn't answer my question. Was I wrong? You know. <sighs> Dylan scoffed, but he didn't answer my question. Was I wrong? I'm not blaming you. We all need it to survive. There's nothing wrong with that. You gotta pay for your house, your studies, food, water, utilities, and your bike. I thought I could count them all on one hand. Damn, it's really expensive now that I think about it. An average paying job couldn't cover this much. Liam's organization can. Oh, so is this job like an official group or an institution of some kind? He shrugged as, he, as I watched his tail shifting around and flopped off the bed. But no, I work through Liam's through Liam because the guys in charge make background checks. I can't have those bastards snooping around. Alright y'all, so a little problem I've noticed is that sometimes when you mute Discord, it will not mute Discord. So, I don't know what the fuck is going on with Discord, but it doesn't always mute. <laughs> the Lynx was the one handling it all, huh? And I unfortunately knew why he was working undercover. I know that talking isn't your thing, but I invited you here for a reason. Dylan faced the ceiling and placed his arms behind his head. A soft grunt followed suit. It's a lot of shit. I don't mind. Of course you don't. I'll be the one talking for the rest of the friggin' day while you're chillin' on that chair. He even closed his eyes and tried sleeping his way out of the sleeping his way out of this conversation. Can't you just give up or something? Stay home and pretend this never happened. I'll decide that at the end of our conversation. Gotta listen to my fairy tale first, am I right? Making fun of me won't change my mind. Fine, get on with it then. He was either being extremely uncooperative or he was still trying to stop me from learning more. I'm gonna start simple, okay? We'll save the worst thing for last. Either way, I couldn't stop now. I already mentioned this, but you knew what my what my headache meant. Yet you didn't say anything. Why? 
I said I'd protect you, didn't I? Hiding stuff from you is part of the deal. Huh? That was some insane mental gymnastics. You have the potential to be a medium, idiot. So they were correlated then. Is that knowledge itself dangerous? It was sweet of him to try to shield me from a possible mistake. Usually, mediums reveal their talent when they acknowledge it. I see. That does sound tricky to deal with. We had to get your consent before revealing that you're a medium. Yeah, that didn't age well. I thought Dylan was at least upholding it. Say no. I chuckled a bit. He was still trying. I cleared up some things, like the weird feeling I experienced whenever I interacted with the occult. So, what does it mean? He saw it happening. He had to say he had to have something to guide me through it. That you're a medium? Please tell me he knew more than that. Keep going. You only reacted. Nothing else happened because I stopped that. He gave me an annoyed look. Like this was the reason why I didn't want to explain. It was a disappointing conversation so far. What about me passing out in the library? His grumpy energy quickly faded away. This must have been a good question. I've been thinking about that too. His expression changed to be more focused. Recalling the things he witnessed back then. You have yet to figure out what you can do, but somehow you are able to use your power anyway. It came across as an impossible action. Second now. I remember that I felt angry. I was angry at you, at myself, at this world, and that feeling of injustice really struck a chord. A smile formed in the corners of his mouth. I like that. Be angry more often. You and Liam have been pushing me over the edge a lot these days. Good, don't let anyone step on you, unless it's me. He grinned. I wasn't sure if that was a joke. You're not getting any special privileges. Everything he said felt both sarcastic and annoyed. I don't need to ask you. I rolled my eyes and gave up on this conversation altogether. You're getting sidetracked. So, your power forcefully came out and your body couldn't handle it. He immediately resumed where, he, where we left off. You were lucky Liam had that, had that water on hand. I remember feeling different after drinking it. It tasted strange. You drank holy water, that's why. Like the water priests use during ceremonies? You're supposed to either throw it at a ghost or drink it yourself to heal. Alright, I'd stop him before he, uh, all right, I'd stop him before he starts calling it a magic potion. Okay, I'm kind of following so far. We're walking into crazy territory, but at least things still have logic. Liam said something about me breaking my own emotions. I didn't understand that part well. Imagine possession, but like doing it to yourself. That genuinely startled me. Possession? Like taking over someone? It was scary to think about. I'd seen that shit in movies and... You have to wait and see what your talent is, but yeah, ghosts can do that. I felt like Patrice, knowing that his fears were totally justified. That castle is full of ghosts?! Dylan pushed me away, not wanting to hear my whining up close. Why the fuck are you screaming? They can't get into you that easily. Hearing that calmed me down temporarily, but I wanted more. Then... No, I won't tell you about that. Your brain is going crazy thinking about it. Look, as long as your mind is stable, no ghost can get inside. That's why you have to stay calm. Fine. I understand. I took a deep breath. We have to leave this conversation for later. He wouldn't tell me now, but I plan to ask again. You'll have to explain why you've been pushing me away. Quite literally, in some cases. Ugh, give it a rest, will you? I can't do that. Tonight, we're going back to the castle, and it obviously is going to be dangerous. I need to know what's, ha what's happening beforehand. The others also deserve a proper warning. You were warned, but you decided not to listen. You could feel it all along. You knew the castle was bad news. Liam did hide how fucked up the curse really is, but nobody was forced to come. That's what he said. We didn't mean any of it. He had to have manipulated us into coming for whatever reason. He was after Clyde. He was after you and Clyde. The others happened to be pressured by you two, which worked in his favor. Clyde and I they only divided my guilt in two and shipped the other half to the dragon. Don't ask me why he targeted you two. I wasn't given that information. You're a medium, but Clyde? He shrugged. No fucking clue. How bad is it? My tongue felt so dry when I spoke those words. No response, but he clearly heard me. How bad is this castle? He looked at me with a piercing stare, with not a single blink. I felt so vulnerable. Stupid people will die. Curses are serious. I knew he was tiptoeing around the real answer. I felt responsible for allowing this to happen in the first place because I got selfish. Liam gave me that role and I naively took it. Relax. Liam won't let you die. Won't let them die. I didn't believe him. How can you say that to me? We know exactly what kind of person he is. 
Then call it off. Pick up your phone and tell Ryan to stay home. Now he's provoking me, like he wanted me to take action instead of help letting it happen. Well, I think it's too late for anybody else to reconsider. I've seen the look on their faces. He grinned, showing me a toothy smile. Everyone's been hiding ulterior motives. I felt so powerless. Life enjoyed torturing me, constantly throwing me to fights I couldn't win. Look, all I'm saying is that this shit ain't your fault. People are stupid and tend to burn themselves. I said I'd come, and I'm sticking by that choice. Do what you want. I ain't stopping you anymore. I got up from my chair and sat on the bed. He glared, trying to get his space back, but I didn't care. He was free to leave. I needed a moment. Emotions are dangerous. Look at this shit you're doing, getting all attached and stuff. That's going to bite you in the ass one day. Actually, that's good for you, isn't it? You people like that. I didn't think I could have groaned any louder upon hearing that. That joke was so bad, it killed my depression. Who the fuck do you think I am? Dylan was preparing another painful response. I didn't want to hear it. I changed my mind. Don't answer that. A mood switched continuously between disappointed and disgusted. I didn't know what to expect anymore. I could feel his tail nudging me forward to create more space without any concern toward me and the fact that he had fallen on the floor. You're so annoying. Stop that. I'm bored. Are you going to ask something or not? I've got things to do. I was scared of asking about that. It was the last piece on my list. The one I've been procrastinating for a while now. He killed someone. That wasn't something you could easily justify, no matter what he will say to me. I cannot forgive such action. I couldn't help but wonder if my own safety was also in jeopardy by interacting with a murderer. Dylan was fortunate that I had spent time with him beforehand, so I could believe he wouldn't hurt me at least. I'll ask a question now. It's important that you answer it first. Sure. I didn't mind taking another detour. Mark assaulted, kidnapped, blackmailed, and threatened you. I didn't approve of any of those actions. I also punished him for doing what he did without asking me first. If I were to ask you to forgive Mark and grant him a second chance, would you do it? I came out of nowhere. Hearing his name brought back all that garbage I went through leading to my collapse. I refused to hear anything other than the truth. The day has been so chaotic I didn't get the opportunity to sort through my feelings and decide where I, where I was standing. What should I do? Forgive Mark. I wasn't a confrontational person. Everyone knew that. I always had what I was told exactly for this reason. I wanted to be left alone. I wanted to be safe. I wanted to be invisible and avoid gathering too much attention. Mark did terrible things to me, but I went through similar stuff before and I guess I got used to it. It didn't bother me as much as it should have and that scared me a little. For the sake of a peaceful life, I guess I could do that. If you're asking me to do it, I wouldn't mind doing it for you. Dylan looked hesitant, almost as if he didn't like my answer. I didn't lie, though. It was a bit rough with me, but I wasn't hurt at all. My body might have been fine, but could I say the same about my own mental health? Zero stayed zero. I mentally laughed. I was an idiot. Ever since you answered, you've been trying to cheer me up. I don't get it. Hmm? You're giving me the answer I want to hear. That's not true. Maybe a little. It wasn't a black and white answer. Enough of this. He didn't always have to be such an asshole about it. Now it's my turn to come clean. Uh, what happens if you don't forget, Mark? I thought about it and recalled the way I felt. The fear I experienced and how in those moments I was afraid to die. My head reminded me of my regrets, my wishes, and the things I still wanted to accomplish. And yet, I wanted to forgive him. Because I was the type of person I was. I didn't want conflict. I didn't want people seeing me as an enemy. No matter how upset I felt, I remained a coward. But Mark did barely touch the surface of what he did to me. So I wanted to accept this as an apology of some sort. I wanted to move on, forget to forget and make everyone happy. But what about me? Was this going to make me happy, knowing very well this wasn't truly what I felt? Was everyone else's happiness more important than mine? I should have said yes. My childhood taught me exactly that. My feelings were a singular entity that couldn't compete against two or more. It only made sense to do what I was told to. What did I say? He had been staring at me the whole time, and his question dragged me back to him. Huh? Say it again. You want the truth. I was afraid of the truth. That was the problem. Lying was easier, safer, and kept everyone happy but me. I guess I was the only one dealing with the consequences of lying. Everyone thought I was fine, but in reality I wasn't. I can't forgive him. I immediately regretted saying it. Dylan stayed emotionless while I was the one going through all the stages of grief in rapid succession. Don't be mad, please. I need time. Shut up, Ari. You did good. Now you're trying to ruin it? 
Why the fuck would I be mad? You should be telling me how much you hate his guts instead. You don't care? Of course I do, but what am I gonna do? Shield him from his responsibilities? He's not a fucking child anymore. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout-out to our lovely Bronze Tier patrons. Thank y'all if I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our Silver Tier patron, Cade Silver, and thank you a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks to our three Gold Tier patrons, Zeke, Toby, and Blue Wolf Alpha. Y'all are awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier. Anyway, if you want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our Safe for Work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye bye